Hello and welcome to today's lecture on multiplexer applications. In the last lecture, we have discussed the various techniques of multiplexing, a set of techniques that is used for multiplexing like frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing and wavelength division multiplexing which is a variation of frequency division multiplexing and also you have discussed two different types of time division multiplexing that is your synchronous time division multiplexing and asynchronous time division multiplexing. These multiplexing techniques have numerous applications. In this lecture, we have chosen two applications which are very common and widely used in our day to day life. Let us see the outline of today's lecture. First, we shall consider the telephone system which you are using in our daily life and in our telephone system you will see there are two types of services, analog services which were prevalent, which were in use for a long time. Now, with the advancement of technology, now the digital services are also available which I shall discuss in detail. Then another very important technology which is becoming very useful for broadband data transmission that is your uh, DSL technology, digital subscriber line technology. And this DSL technology has four variations ADSL, SDSL, HDSL and VDSL. We shall discuss about them uh, in detail. And on completion, the student will be able to explain the operation of telephone system, how a telephone system works, he will be able to tell. Then explain different types of services provided by the telephone system, it will make him aware of the different types of services that is being offered by the telephone system and he can choose the say, service required for his application or her application. Then we shall discuss about the DSL technology and we shall explain, he will be able to, he will be able to explain how the uh, local loop is being used to provide broadband service by using DSL technology. He will be able to explain uh, different types of DSL technologies as I mentioned. So, let us have a look at the telephone system. As I mentioned, one of the many applications of multiplexing is the telephone network, which makes use of both FDM and TDM. So, here uh, it is a combination of frequency division multiplexing and time division multiplexing that is being used in our telephone system. So, it is a very interesting application. So, this is the uh, uh, block uh, the uh, telephone network as you can see to the telephone network a number of telephone uh, sets are connected which we call handsets. Handsets are connected. Obviously, these handsets represent telephones in houses, in uh, offices, in universities, in all the places. These telephones are now distributed uh, in all places. And uh, this telephone network is now is a global network. It is no longer a small telephone network. Now, it is a global network from anywhere you can call to any other place and uh, by dialing a number. So, let us let us have an inner look of the telephone system or telephone network. Uh, telephone network as you can see has got these distinct component first local loop. This local loop is connected to the user. Through this local loop the user is connected here you have got your uh, handset and your handset is connected to the local loop. This local loop is essentially a analog uh, line which has bandwidth of only 4000 hertz and that is adequate for voice communication. So, it is simply twisted pair of wire, twisted pair of wire which is led from the end office, which is essentially the telephone exchange from the end office uh, with the help of twisted pairs of wire. It is connected to our home or office and 
It provides you a analog uh, transmission capability with bandwidth of 4000 hertz. Then these end offices are connected as you can see these end offices are connected uh, using trunk lines to tandem offices and these tandem, office, tandem offices are in turn connected uh, through trunk lines to regional offices. So, this is a some kind of generic representation of the telephone network. So, here I have shown uh, only uh, few trunk lines, it can be through a cascade of trunk lines and obviously, these trunk lines are implemented with the help of high speed uh, lines. For example, these, uh, these trunk lines can be trunk lines uh, can be implemented by using uh, uh, coaxial cable. It can be implemented by using uh, microwave link. It can be implemented by using uh, optical fiber. It can be also implemented by satellite network. So, you may be asking why these are implemented not by using twisted pair of wire. The reason is here these trunk lines are of much higher bandwidth. The, uh, the, the, uh, the voice lines which are only of 4 kilohertz bandwidth, but a number of uh, such lines, such channels are combined with the help of multiplexing technique to have much higher data rates and these are connected using trun trunk line. That is why you will require coaxial cable if the distance is not large or you have to use microwave link or optical fiber and satellite network. So, at different links it can be, uh, uh, it, it can use either microwave link or optical fiber or satellite link. So, it is not uniform, this link can be, this particular link can be uh, uh, microwave link, this can be a satellite link, this can be a uh, optical fiber link and so on. So, in the path as the one user, this user 1 is connected to user 2, it can go through a number of paths through the trunk lines and that can be a combination of various types of transmission media as we have already discussed. So, this is this gives an overview of the telephone network. Now, let us see what are the types of services the, the telephone uh, net sir, telephone net network provides to us. The services can be broadly divided into two types analog services and digital services. Analog services are available from the telephone companies for a long time that means, these analog services we are using for quite some time. And, uh, and with the advancement of technology, uh, the digital services have been introduced and in recent times and nowadays we are able to use the digital services. So, I shall discuss both analog services and digital services one after the other. First, let us focus on the analog services. The analog services uh, is the, has got two different types of services. One is known as analog switch service and another is analog lease service. Analog switch service is the most commonly used service that we use at home. We get a telephone connection from the telephone exchange that is your local office using local loop which is nothing but a twisted pair of wire and we get the uh, telephone service at our home and that is the analog switch service that is the most commonly used service. And analog lease service is one that provides a dedicated line between two users. Let us see the difference between the two. Uh, the first one the analog switch service the in this particular case as I mentioned the subscribers handset is connected to the telephone network by twisted pair cable. Uh, which is known as local loop via an exchange. So, to the exchange uh, through that exchange our handset is connected through the local loop and the signal on the local loop is analog in nature having bandwidth of 0 to 4000 hertz as I have mentioned. 
Now, there is a switch in the exchange that connects the subscriber, uh, connects a subscriber to the subscriber of the dial number for the duration of call. You, you, you look at this turn, here you have got the So, here as you can see here, we are having a uh, for only for the duration call, we are duration of call we are getting the service and uh, for other times it is not connected and the network that is why is referred to as public switch telephone network. Why? That will be clear from this diagram. Here you see we have got a handset at home. There is another handset in a neighboring home that is connected through a telephone network. In the simplest case, it can be the local exchange, and these two home, uh, home the telephones can be connected to the to the uh, local exchange, and using two local loops. These are twisted pair of wire. Now, only when the number is dialed from here, uh, this user one at home. Uh, this user 1 dials a number, this switch establishes a connection from here to here. So, a connection is established from here to there and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the home at the other end uh, gets the dial tone and uh, only when it is picked up a link is established and only for the duration of call the link is established and when the uh, call is terminated that means after the uh, uh, after the uh, communication is over then the handset is put down at both ends and the link is disconnected so that's why i mentioned that only this link is only for the duration of call it is not connected otherwise and that's why the network is referred to as public switch telephone network so it is doing some kind of switching and only for the duration of call, it is establishing a link between two users through the telephone network. Now, it can be through a single exchange or through those trunk lines and involving more, uh, more uh, offices as I have mentioned earlier. Now, let us consider the other types of service, analog lease service. There are many applications in which uh, the the, an user wants to send data continuously or wants to communicate continuously. In such a case, analog lease service is available and in this case, the important point is although the connection is through a through an exchange and there is a switch here, but the switch has established a permanent path as you can see between these two handsets. So, the user 1 need not really dial a number to establish a connected establish a connection to user B already a link is established. So, whenever he wants he simply can talk or send data through this uh, lease line that means whenever the usage rate is very high people are talking all the time or people are sending data all the time in such case this kind of lease line can be established. So, it is dedicated and that means this uh, the uh, the band whole bandwidth is available all the time it is not switched one and uh, this is this is in use in many situations where the usage raise rate is much higher. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, various links can be of uh, high higher bandwidth and in such a case for better utilization of the infrastructure, analog signals are multiplexed to provide lines of higher bandwidth. So, you have to combine several signals or several low bandwidth channels to, uh, to, uh, to form a high bandwidth channel will, which can be sent through transmission media of higher bandwidth. And the frequency division multiplexing is used to combine many lines into fewer lines in a hierarchical manner. So, a hierarchical um, in a hierarchical manner 
this combination is done and there are very variety of hierarchy available nowadays. The hierarchical system used by AT&T companies group companies I have, uh, is shown here and as you shall see in the hierarchy it is divided uh, into groups, super groups, master groups and jumbo groups as it is shown in this diagram. Here as you can see 12 voice channels are combined by using frequency division multiplexing technology to form a group and this groups uh, here it can be sent through a single telephone line, single line need not be to a twisted pair, pair, it can be some other transmission media. Here as you can see the bandwidth is 48 kilohertz. And again 5 such groups can be combined uh, to form a super group, where each super group will have bandwidth of 240 kilohertz. And as you can see uh, using this bandwidth you can send 60 voice channels. In the previous case you are having 12 voice channels and then 5 such groups are combined to form a super group and this line through this line you can transmit 240 kilohertz bandwidth and uh, so it allows you to send 60 voice channels. That means suppose there are 2 exchanges and 2 exchanges are connected and uh, it is necessary to provide uh, to, to establish link of 60 voice channels, then a single transmission media can be uh, set up between two exchanges and through which 60 voice channels can be sent. Then these super groups can be combined to form master groups and as you can see each master group uh, line can carry 600 voice channels having bandwidth 2.5 to kilohertz. And again 6 master groups can be combined to form a jumbo group and this jumbo group uh, has bandwidth of 16.984 kilohertz which can carry as many as 3600 voice channels. So as you can see uh, a transmission media uh, if it is a twisted pair it, it can carry 4 kilohertz, a transmission media of higher bandwidth a single line can be used to carry 48 kilohertz or 240 kilohertz or 2.52 kilohertz or 16.98 kilohertz have providing you uh, and, and voice channels of different numbers starting from 12 to 3600 voice channels. So it will lead to uh, uh, better utilization of the uh, lines of higher bandwidth. <coughs> Now let us look at the digital services. Digital, as I mentioned uh, because of the advancement of technology, uh, now the digital services are becoming increasingly popular because of higher immunity to noise uh, and other interferences. If you send in terms of zeros and 1, it is very unlikely that it will be get corrupted. On the other hand, the analog signals get corrupted with uh, noise. And if you are sending digital signals at the other end with the help of repeaters, it can be the noise can be separated and you can get back the original zeros and ones. And also another important aspect is the digital transmission provides you lower cost compared to the analog transmission because digital processing has become cheaper. And there are three categories of digital services. First one is switched 56, second one is DDS third one is DS. I shall explain each of them one after the other. The switch 56 service which is nothing but a digital version of the analog switch line. Uh, I have already explained that analog switch line. So, it is essentially the digital version and it allows you data rate of up to 56 kilobits per second. And of course, since it is digital in nature there is no need to have modem in this particular uh, switched 56 service. However, there will be a need for another device known as digital service unit or DSU. And this DSU provides you better speed, less susceptibility to noise and better quality. And uh, this particular service provides you bandwidth on demand. You may recall that when I discussed about that inverse multiplexing, there uh, 
a high speed line can be divided into a number of low speed lines to provide service uh, based on uh, I mean bandwidth on demand. For example, whenever we are sending voice signal, then the bandwidth requirement of 56 kilobits per second may be sufficient. Whenever we are sending data, the bandwidth requirement can be can be double of that. In such a case, two lines can be demanded. Whenever we are sending video, say 1.544 megabits, then 24 or more number of this uh, switch 56 lines can be provided. So, this switch 56 service allows you to have bandwidth on demand by using that inverse multiplexing. Inverse multiplexing. So, using this service, you can have inverse multiplexing. And here, that switch 56 service is shown. It is same except that instead of modem you have got that DSU digital service unit at both ends and it is connected through a switch at the telephone exchange. So, whenever the dialing is done this is also a dialed connection. So, uh, dial up line through this whenever the dialing is done link is established between these two DSUs and uh, this, uh, this the communication is possible between two users connected through the telephone exchange. Then comes the digital data service or DDS. So, this is again the digital version of analog lease line. We have already discussed the analog lease line. So, here also you can have uh, leased connection or dedicated connection, dedicated connection and it allows you data rate of up to 56 kilobits per second. However, there is a choice. Since it is dedicated, you may not be always using 56 kilobits per second. So, in such a case, you can choose data rates of 2.4 kilobits per second or 4.8 kilobits per second or 9.6 kilobits per second or 19.2 kilobits per second or 56 kilobits per second. That means, whenever you are using this DTS service, depending on your requirement, you can specify what is the bandwidth you want. It can vary from 2.4 kilobits per second to 56 kilobit per second. So, since it is available uh, all the time, you can make use uh, of, uh, you can make use of the uh, band bandwidth by sending data by scheduling the data all the time. However, as your need grows, you can keep on increasing from 2.4 kilobits per second to 56 kilobit per second. Of course, here also there is a need for that digital service unit. You do not require a modem, but you will require a digital service unit. However, in this case that DDS that is being used is cheaper and simpler. Why? Uh, because you do not require a keypad. In the previous case, where it was switched 56 service, there was a need for a keypad, so that a number can be dialed. You can keep the uh, press the keys, so that a number can be dialed, but here it is lease service. So, already a permanent link is there. There is no need for dialing a number. So, the DSU is simpler and cheaper, because it does not require a keypad. So, here is the schematic diagram for digital data service DDS and as you can see here you have got two DSUs connected uh, permanently connected through the telephone exchange. Of course, there is a switch here that switch I have not shown. So, that switch is estab establishing connection uh, from this to this and this is permanent one and uh, so, um, the this, this data rate uh, can vary from 2.4 as I have mentioned 2.4 to 56 kilobit per second through this line. So, this is the digital data service. Finally, you have got the digital signal service and this digital signal service DS service provides you a hierarchy of digital services. Here, the bandwidth requirement can be as small as 64 kilobits per second and as your need grows, it can go up to 274.176 megabit per second. So, the hierarchy is available 
through a number of services and these services are known as for example, DS0. DS0 service is similar to DDS. It is a single digital channel. However, the bandwidth is uh, here 64 kilobits per second that data rate that is being allowed uh, instead of 56 kilobits per second. And DS1 is provides you 1.544 megabits per second service. How I shall explain? Then DS2 provides you 6.312 megabits per service megabits per second service. DS3 allows you 44.376 megabits per second service. So, through a single transmission media, you can have the this kind of this data rate 44.376 or you can have uh, 274.176 megabit per second service if you are having a DS4 uh, service. And these services are implemented with the help of T lines. So, implementation is done by using T lines and uh, for example, T uh, as I shall show you how it is being done. Say DS, this is the DS0 service each of uh, 64 kilobits per second and then 24 such channels are combined by using frequency division multiplexing to get DS1 service and here the bandwidth is 1.544 megabits per second where uh, that 24 DS0 uh, channels are accommodated. And by combining uh, 5 such lines you can have 6.312 megabits per second or uh, sorry not 4 uh, not 5 4, 4 such lines and you can have 4 DS1 or 96 DS0 you have a choice uh, through each of these lines DS2 uh, service lines services. Then a DS3 service uh, provides you 44.376 megabits per second where you can have 7 DS2 or 28 DS1 or 672 DS0 channels. And finally, you can have DS4 service which will provide you 274.176 megabits per second and uh, in either you can have 6 DS3 or 42 DS2 or equivalent number of DS0 services. So, as you can see here increasingly you can have services of increasingly higher bandwidth and these are supported with the help of those T lines. For example, those T0 T lines and I shall show you uh, how a T1 line can be used. T0 is 64 kilobits per second. How a T1 line can be used for analog transmission using PCM con for conversion to digital signal? How you are getting 1.544? That is being shown here. Here, as you can see, 24 voice channels are combined to uh, combined. Uh, are, I mean, combined to form one T1 line. And as you can see, each voice channel of 4 kilohertz is converted to 64 uh, kilobits per second using pulse code modulation technology. That means, we are sampling for since it is 4 kilohertz bandwidth, you have to sample at the rate of 8 kilohertz, then by using 8 bit uh, uh, quantization, that means uh, an, an analog to digital conversion uh, by using 8 bit AD converters you can have 8 kilohertz into 8 that means 64 uh, bits per second each channel. Then the 64 kilobit per second channels are combined by using a time division multiplexing. Here as you can see you are not using frequency division multiplexing because here the uh, this is digital transmission it is no longer analog. In the earlier case for analog services it was uh, it was frequency division multiplexing. Now, as you can see, it is uh, time division multiplexing. So, the time division multiplexing is giving you, uh, com is combining those 24 voice channels and as you can see, uh, you have 24 6 kilobits per second voice channels and it has got 8 kilobits per channel overhead and this overhead is essentially for the purpose of synchronization, synchronization bits are there as it is shown in this diagram. So, here as you can see uh, 
this is a frame where channel 1, channel 2 for, from each channel 8 bits are taken, 8 bits from channel 1, 8 bits from another second channel and this way 24 channels are there and for each frame there is a synchronization bit of 1 bit and this frame therefore comprises 24 into 8 plus 1, 193 bits and uh, you have got a total of 8000 frames. So, T1 line supports you 8000 frames of each of 193 bits per second giving you 1.544 megabits per second. That is how you get T1 frame of 1.544 bits per second. Now, uh, this has opened up a, a new option earlier suppose a particular uh, house or a business organization requiring 24 uh, telephone lines. Then from the telephone exchange it was necessary to uh, connect by using 24 different twisted pair software. So, 25, 24 pair software were coming from the telephone exchange to the, uh, to the uh, business house. Now, it is no longer necessary. You simply take one T1 line and at your at the uh, at the uh, in, I mean in the in, in the business house you you have a so small tele uh, that PCM exchange you can say and from there you can get back the PCM lines. So, there is no need to take 24 pair softwares instead just one cable one transmission media it can be depending on the length it can be either uh, twisted pair or some other transmission media and then here by the, uh, the that conversion is done from TDM that there will be a small exchange PCM exchange which will convert to give you 24 voice channels. So, small telephone exchange can be set up in the uh, in, in the in your home or in a in a complex in a say, residential complex or in a business house to uh, give you 24 separate voice channels or 24 different uh, telephone sets. Now, uh, there is another possibility. For example, uh, can these T1 lines be shared? A business, a small business organization may not require the full T1 service or T1 line uh, bandwidth that means 1.544 megabits may not be required. Can it be shared? That is possible with the help of this DSU CS unit. This is customer service unit service. What can be done? Here for example, say 4 subscriber wants to share a T1 line. That can be done say in a building there are 4 uh, business houses and each of them uh, having requirement of one fourth of bandwidth of the T1 line. Then they for the, these four subscribers can share a single T1 line with the help of a DSU CSU unit and uh, from each of these business house it is connected to the DSU CSU. Say here it is one fourth of T1, one fourth of T1, one fourth of T1, there is a, there will be another one and they are combined and this goes to the uh, telephone. Uh, that is your telephone company and you get a uh, you get a some kind of shared T1 service. So, this kind of flexibility is being offered by these T1 lines. Now, let us switch to another important technology that is your digital subscriber, uh, subscriber line DSL technology. Uh, this DSL provides you a much higher bandwidth broadband. How? And that is being done by using the local loop. Earlier we were having only 4 kilobits per second bandwidth through the local loop. But the although the twisted pair of wire has the capability of transmission of much higher bandwidth that is 1.1 megabits per second, we are restricting it because of our requirement we were filtering as putting low pass filters. So, that only 4 kilohertz signals go, but now it can be uh, that filter can be removed. So, inherent bandwidth of 1.1 megahertz of the uh, wires that is being used in uh, existing local, local loop 
can be ex exploited or has been exploited in DSL technology. Of course, for that purpose it has to use suitable modulation techniques as well as multiplexing techniques. So, here you will see it has used a combination of modulation and multiplexing techniques to achieve this high bandwidth using local loops. And DSL again has got several versions ADSL, VDSL, HDSL and SDSL. So, this uh, family can be represented by XDSL. So, X can be A, B, H or S any one of them. Let us see these four different versions one after the other. ADSL stands for asymmetrical DSL digital service line and this has been primarily designed for residential users, residential users. And of course, as we shall see although it is it will be able to provide much higher bandwidth, but based on the condition of the local loop the data rate is selected in adaptive manner because the local loop where is twisted pair that twisted pair of where can run for a kilometer or 2 kilometer. So, it length can be different the quality of cable can be different the cable can pass through different areas where the noise levels can be different. So, based on that the data rate is selected in adaptive manner and it uses a novel modulation technique known as discrete multitone technique DMT which I shall explain in detail which uses a combination of QAM quadrature amplitude modulation and frequency division multiplexing. And as we shall see the available bandwidth is 1.104 megahertz which is divided into 256 channels each having bandwidth of 4.312. So, uh, the entire bandwidth is divided into 256 channels out of which uh, one is that channel 0 is dedicated for voice, channel 1 to 5 is not used, it has been left for future, then there is a upstream channels, 24 upstream channels, one of which is control channel from 6 to 30 and downstream channels 31 to 254. So, you have got a, a larger number of downstream channels compared to upstream channels, you may be asking why. Suppose, you are ask, you are having internet service through a DSL line. Then from the home to the internet service provider the, uh, the, the data rate is much lower compared to because most of the time you are downloading the uh, downloading something which has much higher bandwidth. So, you require much higher downstream bandwidth that is why the number of channels allocated for downstream is much larger. So, 200 and uh, uh, as you can see 31 to 255. So, here the discrete multitone technique is explained as you can see here it say it uses voice channel this is your channel 0 then channel 6 to channel 32 here uh, there are some serial to par parallel converters. So, upstream bits are coming and which is converted into 24 channels and each of the channels is encoded by using QAM 15 bit, 15 bit QAM and each of them is connected to a FDM uh, multiplexer frequency division multiplexer and similarly the downstream signals there are 31 to 255 channels 31 to 255 these channels are again convert is here uh, so, whatever is coming the digital data is converted into that QAM that is your uh, quadrature amplitude modulation, then you are doing parallel to uh, serial conversion here there is a mistake spelling mistake parallel uh, and here you get the downstream bits and this is this is where at the end of this frequency division multiplexer where you have got 20 256 channels which are combined each having a bandwidth of 4.312 kilohertz each gives you a bandwidth of 1.104 megahertz. This can be uh, this this frequency division multiplex these signals can be sent through the twisted pair of wire 
from the from home to the telephone exchange using local look. Here as you can see channel 0 is reserved for voice in this discrete multitone technique and uh, channel uh, 1 to 4 is not used idle as I explained earlier. Then upstream data and control uses 24 channels from 6 to 30 and for upstream data and control, one channel is used for control that means 23 are available for, for uh, data transmission. And as you can see how you are getting 1.44 megabits per second, 24 into 4000 into 15 by using QAM we are getting uh, 15 bits. So, uh, it gives you 1.44 megabits per second for upstream, upstream, upstream means from the home user to the internet service provider or the telephone exchange and downstream data and control provides you 255 channels from 31 to uh, 255 uh, for downstream data and control. So, you can see actual bandwidth is uh, 244 into uh, 224 actually here it will be 224 not 20 uh, not 255 224 channels so 224 into 4000 into 15 that gives you 30 13.4 megabits per second so these are the maximum possible bandwidths available for upstream 1.44 megabits per second for downstream 13.4 megabits per second but in practice because of the line condition the data rate is dynamically varied. In practice, you will get only 64 kilobits per second to 1 megabits per second for upstream and 500 kilobits per second to 8 megabits per second for downstream. So, it is far lower than the 13.4 megabits per second because usually the, uh, the local loop quality is not very high. So, unless it is very close and quality of cable is very high, you will not get very high bandwidth, but this itself is quite high compared to 4 kilobits per second. And the equipments used in ADSL is shown here. So, this is uh, uh, from this is the customer residence that is home, uh, the, uh, the local loop is coming here with the help of a filter you are separating out the voice channel and it one is going to ADSL modem, ADSL modem is getting back the data from the here as you know the you have got frequency division multiplexing is done and that FDM and it is performing the conversion demodulation giving you data uh, of much higher rate and which is going to your computer. Similarly, at the from the customer premise it is going to the telephone exchange and here there is a filter it is going to the telephone network and there is a DSL, DSL AM. Uh, that uh, digital service uh, line uh, access multiplexer. So, this access this access multiplexer actually not only does the uh, modulation that uh, that necessary multiplexing and other thing it also does the framing. So, which is needed for internet uh, for internet communication to the internet service provider. So, this goes to the internet service provider. So, using these two equipment you can have the ADSL service. And there are other AD, DSL technologies like symmetric digital subscriber line SDSL. This divides the available bandwidth equally because in this case it is not for home users. So, bandwidth there is no need to have separate bandwidth for upstream and downstream. So, here the bandwidth is equally divided then you can have high data rate digital subscriber line HDSL which is an alternative to T1 line. Uh, as we know the uh, T1 line uses the AMI amplitude mark inversion encoding and it is very susceptible to no atten attenuation and noise, attenuation at high frequencies. As a, rate, as a re result you do not get more than 1 kilometer uh, without using repeater. On the other hand, in HDSL it uses 2B1Q encoding and which is less susceptible to attenuation. It allows you 2 megabits per second over a distance of 3.6 kilometer compared to 1 kilometer without any repeater and it uses 2 twisted pair wire for full duplex communication. 
it allows you to have full duplex communication. Finally, the uh, that very high uh, bit rate digital subscriber line VDSL, it is similar to ADSL, but uses it can use coaxial, fiber optic or twisted pair wire for short distances and using this uh, DMT that, um, uh, that modulation technique that I have explained, it allows you 1.5 to 2.5 megabits per upstream and 50 to 55 megabits per second uh, downstream, which will not be upstream, it will be downstream. So, these are the different variations of DSL technologies that I have discussed and here are the review questions. Distinguish between analog switch service and analog lease line. Second question, if a single mode optical fiber can transmit at 10 gigabits per second, how many telephone channels can one cable can carry, can one cable carry? Question 3, how DSL provides broadband service over local loop? Fourth question is, why the actual data rates available through DSL line is substantially lower than maximum possible rates? These are the four questions which will be answered in the next lecture. And here are the answers to the questions of lecture number 11. First question was, in what situation multiplexing is used? Answer is multiplexing is used in situations where the transmission transmitting media is having higher bandwidth, but the signals have lower bandwidth. That means from different channels the bandwidth is lesser. Hence, there is a possibility of sending a number of signals simultaneously. In this situation, multiplexing can be used. Multiplexing can be used to achieve the following goals. Number one, to send a large number of signals simultaneously. Two, to reduce the cost of transmission. Three, to make effective use of the available bandwidth. So, these are the goals of multiplexing as I explained in the last lecture. Second question was, distinguish between the two basic multiplexing techniques. Answer is, the two basic multiplexing techniques are frequency division multiplexing and time division multiplexing. FDM can be used to transmit a number of analog signals simultaneously in different frequency bands. TDM also known as synchronous time division multiplexing is used when digital signal uh, with digital signals by sending signals from different sources in different time slots of a frame as I have explained in the last lecture in details. Third question was why guard bands are used in FDM? Answer is in frequency division multiplexing a number of signals are sent simultaneously on the same medium by allocating separate frequency band or channel to each, each signal. Guard bands are used to avoid interference between two successive channels as I have seen. If you do not provide guard band, then there is a possibility that signals of two adjacent channels will overlap leading to crosstalk. Finally, why sync pulse is required in TDM? In TDM, each frame time slots are pre-assigned and, and are fixed for each input sources. In order to identify the beginning of each frame, a sync pulse is added at the beginning of every frame. So, essentially the frames at the beginning of each frame has to be identified. That is done with the help of the uh, synchronization pulse provided in the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the uh, frame. The fifth question was, what limitation of TDM is overcome in ATM and how? In time division multiplexing, each frame consists of a set of time slots and each source is assigned one slot per frame. In a particular frame, if a source is not having data, then that time slot goes empty or it goes wasted. As a result, many of the time slots are wasted as we have seen in details. This problem is overcome in ATM st which stands for asynchronous time division multiplexing or statistical time division multiplexing and in ATM the time slots are not pre-assigned to a particular data source. Rather, 
slots are dynamically allocated as I have explained in the last lecture to sources on demand. So, it is dynamically allocated on demand depending on the availability of data from different sources. That is how it makes better use of the bandwidth of the transmission media. Uh, finally, this is the last question that was given. Design a time division multiplex system having output bandwidth of 128 kilobits per second to send data from 4 analog sources of 2 kilohertz bandwidth and 8 digital signals of 72, 7200 bits per second. Here, uh, it is shown uh, this 2 kilohertz analog signals which are coming from 4 channels are converted into digital form by using pulse code modulation. Each is converted to 64 kilobits. So, you see 2 kilohertz. So, you have to sample at 4 kilohertz then by uh, each PCM has 4 bit uh, AD converter. So, you get 4 kilo 16 kilobits for each channel then you have got uh, buffers of 2 bits here. Similarly, the 7200 bits per second here as you can see here we shall be sampling at the rate of uh, 8 kilobits per second. So, uh, you have to do pulse stuffing as I explained uh, in the last lecture you have to add additional bits uh, by pulse stuffing and that is how you will convert the 7200 bits per signal. Uh, to 8 kilobits per signal. So, these 8 kilobits per signals uh, channels are uh, each provided with 1 bit buffer and here you have got the multiplexers which are generating 64 kilobits per second signals and here you have got 8 bit buffer and here also you have got 8 bit buffer then alternately you are taking 8 bit 8 bit from there to get 128 kilobits per second uh, uh, composite signal and here is the frame shown channel 1 2 bit, channel 2 2 bit, channel 2 4 bit, uh, channel 4 8 bit. So, here you get 8 bit from this source and another a 1 bit from each uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 that gives you the uh, signals coming from channel 5 to channel 12 and this is the entire frame. Of course, here the synchronization bit is not shown just the uh, just the multiplexing part is shown in this particular diagram and how you are getting 128 kilobits per second. So, with this we come to the end of lecture number 12. So, here we have discussed two very important applications of multiplexing. In the next lecture, we shall discuss three important applications of multiplexing. Thank you.